In December of 1946, Paula Jean Weldon decided to end her day by going for a little hike on the Vermont Long Trail near Glastonbury Mountain. Shortly after she started, she passed a group of hikers going the opposite direction, and then she vanished. Forever. And as disturbing as that sounds, it gets even more disturbing because her disappearance was only one of five that occurred near Glastonbury Mountain from 1945 to 1950. This area has since been given an eerie name, the Bennington Triangle. And one of the most famous footpaths in the world runs directly through it. Every single year, thousands of AT through hikers venture right into the heart of this mysterious area, and a lot of them don't even know it. This is the story of Paula Jean Weldon and the Bennington Triangle. 80% of my audience is not subscribed right now, so if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so. Help me get to my goal of 50,000 subscribers. Okay. During the afternoon on Sunday, December 1st, 1946, college student Paula Jean Weldon told her roommate that she was going for a hike. Weldon was a student at Bennington College in southern Vermont. It was 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside that afternoon, and as someone from Vermont, I grew up there, I can tell you that 50 degrees in December is much warmer than usual for that time of year. It's due to these temperatures, perhaps, that Weldon was not dressed appropriately for the cold temperatures that the Vermont mountains can experience in December. She was wearing a red parka jacket with a trimmed fur hood, blue jeans, and sneakers. And while this clothing was perfectly adequate for the temperatures in town that day, it was definitely not warm enough for the colder temperatures that were soon coming to the mountains over the next few hours. Around 2.45 p.m., passing motorist Lewis Knapp saw her hitchhiking on Vermont Route 67A and decided to give her a ride. He dropped her off on Route 9, a near three miles away from the Long Trail, which was her intended destination. The Long Trail runs the entire length of Vermont from Massachusetts to Canada, and Route 9 is the last road crossing before the trail begins to climb to the summit of Glastonbury Mountain. Today, the Long Trail and the Appalachian Trail coincide through Southern Vermont, which includes this section. They are the exact same trail in this area. The Appalachian Trail did exist back in 1946, but after doing some research, it's unclear to me whether or not the two trails followed the same route back at the time. Paula Jean Weldon made her way to the trail and she started hiking. It's really unclear what her plan was and honestly it kind of seems like she didn't really have one. I say this because around 4 p.m. she passed a man named Ernest Whitman and a few of his friends and she asked him for directions and about how long the trail was. Whitman answered her questions but he also cautioned her against hiking very far into the woods because once again she wasn't wearing adequate clothing for the weather that they were about to experience and also because it was 4 p.m. and nighttime was fast approaching. Again, I am from Vermont, I'm a native Vermonter, and I can tell you that in early December, it gets dark real quick. By 4 p.m., it would have already been starting to get dark, and by 5 p.m., it would have been solidly nighttime. Unfortunately, Paula Jean Weldon did not heed Whitman's warning, and she hiked into the woods. And this was the last time that Paula Jean Weldon was ever confirmed to have been seen dead or alive. There were a few other reported sightings of her along this part of the trail, but none of them were discovered to be credible. Her interaction with Ernest Whitman took place near Bickford Hollow, which ironically enough is an area that I hiked directly through back in 2021. I knew about Weldon's story at the time, but I didn't know about the significance of the spot I was standing right when I took this video. This spot is now known as Harbor Road, and the present day Long Trail slash Appalachian Trail route is a few miles to the east of here. However, my understanding is that back in 1946, Harbor Road was the official Long Trail route. Paula Jean Weldon continued north on the Long Trail. She wasn't carrying a backpack and she didn't have any extra clothing. That night and into the next morning, the temperatures dropped, the wind picked up, and it even started to snow. And by the morning of December 2nd, Weldon's roommate started to get concerned because she hadn't returned yet. Her roommate contacted the administrators at Bennington College. They contacted the authorities and Weldon's family, 
and the search was on. They started by searching the college campus, but quickly turned their attention to the long trail after Ernest Whitman, the last man that Weldon had spoken to, recognized her photograph in the paper. The search for Paula Jean Weldon was massive. Over 125 people from the colleges in the area volunteered, and 120 men from the National Guard were brought in to help search as well. They also used planes, and they ultimately searched all of the long trail up to the summit of Glastonbury Mountain and another trail in the area that goes over Bald Mountain and also along Route 9 from Bennington to Brattleboro. Despite all of this searching, Weldon was never found and neither was any trace of her. And by December 15th, they made the frustrating decision to call off the search. And to this day, there's still no answers about what happened to Paula Jean Weldon. There's no evidence, there's no suspects, there's nothing. Time went by, a lot of time, and eventually it became clear that she had become the second victim of the Bennington Triangle. You heard that right. She was the second victim. The first victim of the Bennington Triangle was a 74-year-old hunter named Mitty Rivers. Now, before I get into these next four disappearances, I just wanna say it was a lot harder to find accurate information about these cases than it was about Weldon's case. I found a lot of conflicting reports. It seems like some of the information is more just like local tales that have been passed down. And so definitely take these next four stories with a grain of salt. In November of 1945, less than a year before before Weldon disappeared, Mitty Rivers was leading a hunting party in the southwest woods of Glastonbury Mountain. This area is very close to the Long Trail. The group was heading back to camp and Rivers ended up getting a little bit ahead of everybody else. And this didn't concern any of the other hunters because Rivers was a very experienced outdoorsman. However, he never returned to camp that night and he was ultimately reported missing. 300 volunteers and US Army soldiers searched the area extensively for over a week, and the only thing they found was a discarded rifle cartridge of the same type that Mitty Rivers used. No other trace of him was ever found. Flash forward to December 1st, 1949, exactly three years to the date that Paula Jean Weldon went missing, and the Bennington Triangle claimed its third victim. This time it was a man named James Tedford, and out of all these disappearances, this one definitely makes the least amount of sense. Tedford was taking a bus from St. Albans in Northern Vermont back down to Bennington. According to witnesses, Tedford was on the bus all the way down through the last stop the bus made before arriving in Bennington. However, when the bus finally did stop at its final destination, Tedford was gone. His belongings were still on the bus and nobody saw him leave. And honestly, that's pretty much all there is to this story. Nobody ever heard from him again. We don't know what happened. I guess we just have to chalk it up to the Bennington Triangle. In October of 1950, the Bennington Triangle claimed its fourth and fifth victims. The first was eight-year-old Paul Jepson, and he was playing in his mother's pickup truck when she left him unattended for a little while. It was unclear to me how long. Some reports said just a few moments. Some reports said like an hour. But either way, when his mother returned to her pickup truck, Paul was gone. According to the boy's father, Paul had been talking about visiting the mountains for several days, presumably the ones surrounding Glastonbury Mountain because that was very close to where they lived. And once again, that's pretty much all we know about this case. I will say that there is a local legend that quote, bloodhounds tracked his scent down to the same highway that Paula Jean Weldon disappeared nearby a few years earlier. I wasn't able to find any information that confirmed that. However, I did find an old newspaper clipping that says the dogs followed his scent to the junction of East and Chapel Roads, which as you can see here, is right on the edge of the vast Glastonbury wilderness. And just 16 days after Paul Jepson went missing, the Bennington Triangle claimed its fifth and final victim. This was 53-year-old Frida Langer, who was camping at the Somerset Reservoir, which is very close to Glastonbury Mountain. The only things between the reservoir and the mountain summit are a few remote dirt roads and about six miles of wilderness. Langer and her cousin had left their campsite to go for a hike, but shortly after they left, she accidentally slipped and fell into a stream. She told her cousin that she was just gonna quickly go back to the campsite to change her clothes, but she never caught back up. And when her cousin went back to the campsite, there was no sign of her there either. A massive search of 400 people was conducted, but they never found her 
until seven months later in May of 1951. Langer's case is unique because out of the five disappearances inside the Bennington Triangle, her body was the only one to ever be recovered. On May 12th, 1951, Langer's body was discovered near the eastern branch of the Deerfield River on the east side of Glastonbury Mountain. No cause of death was ever determined, unfortunately, because of the condition that they found her remains in. So why do they call it the Bennington Triangle? I mean, obviously it's a play on the Bermuda Triangle, and obviously all these people went missing near Bennington and Glastonbury Mountain, but does the triangle part of this really play a relevant part in the story? Well, allow me to explain. James Tedford and Paul Jepson disappeared near the town of Bennington, Vermont, right here. Frida Langer disappeared near the Somerset Reservoir, which is right over here. And finally, Paula Jean Weldon and Mitty Rivers disappeared near the Long Trail, which runs up Glastonbury Mountain. And when we connect the dots here, you see this is how we get the triangle. And what's even more startling is that if you pay close attention, you might notice that the Appalachian Trail, which is this white line right here, runs directly through the heart of the triangle. Now I promise I'm not trying to scare you off from hiking the Appalachian Trail. Clearly none of these disappearances had anything to do with Appalachian Trail hikers. I mean, none of them even occurred on the Appalachian Trail as far as I'm aware, although two did occur very close to or directly on the Long Trail. I just wanna make more hikers aware of this story and make the connection between the Bennington Triangle and the Appalachian Trail because I've rarely ever seen anybody do so, which is really odd because once again, the trail runs right through the center of the triangle. If you're hiking Glastonbury Mountain in the future, I guarantee you'll be just fine. There's really nothing to worry about, but I think we can all admit that it is kind of creepy how this triangle exists and the AT goes right through it. For what it's worth, I guess, if you are hiking through that area, and especially if you're wandering off the trail to use the bathroom or something like that, I don't know, just keep an eye out. You never know what piece of evidence could be lurking out there just a little bit off of the trail. And one thing that's definitely not lurking off the side of the trail is the subscribe button because it's right in front of your face. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.